In part three of this talk on African-American poetry, I thought I would talk a little more sp specifically. I want to devote this last bit, this, this next uh, se segment to Langston Hughes. Um, Langston Hughes is a, a massive figure. And just by way of introducing him so that we have a sense of it, Langston Hughes um, was born in 1902, um, and he had a very strained relationship, as we found out, with his father, who eventually moved to Mexico. Um, Langston Hughes was uh, uh, African American, there's no question about it, slightly lighter skinned, and, um, and he had a connection with his father, but was, alien. It was estranged from his father for a long period. Um, there's, a, there's an account that Langston Hughes gives of at a point when he was um, in his late teens when he decided to travel to, um, to Mexico to, 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 to visit his father and to meet his father. And, um, and he arrives um, uh, at the Mississippi River. And, and, and that moment where he lands on the Mississippi River, he writes a poem called The Negro Speaks of Rivers. Um, and, and it's a poem that we're going to look at in some detail uh, today, but it was a very pivotal moment for him. Um, he probably was about 18 years old, and this, this is a poem that he wrote, and yet one of his first poems that he sort of really consciously identifies um, as, as, as one of the first poems he's written, and yet it's a, such a powerful and, and beautifully constructed poem that can teach us a great deal about the, the work of Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes would go on to be, to, 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 to be in Harlem when he moves to Harlem, uh, to become very much embroiled in, embraced by the, the, the um, Harlem Renaissance. Um, but he becomes very excitable about the Harlem Renaissance, and that gets him interested in jazz, into blues music, and so on, and he begins to write significantly. Langston Hughes, really, um, s starting at that early age in the ni early 1920s, um, would have a career that would span until his death in the, ni the mid-1960s. And in a sense, at the end of Langston Hughes's career, it's the emergence of something called the Black Arts Movement. And, and for many of the young writers, people like Amir Baraka and, and so on of the Black Arts Movement, there was a funny kind of dismissal of Langston Hughes as a kind of old hat and somebody who didn't have value. But of course, Langston Hughes had had this rich career. And even at the end of his career, he was writing radically and thoughtfully in ways that um, I think many of the black arts, artists later on would have to admit that Langston Hughes was in the spirit um, of black arts movement and the celebration of blackness and black identity. Here's an interesting fact. Of course, the reception of Langston Hughes by American the American poetry establishment um, was 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 slow going, um, despite his prolific nature, despite his popularity and his success as a poet, and the complexity and range of his work. Um, in the 1950s, when America was putting together these special anthologies of great American poets, living American poets, and so on, Langston Hughes was nowhere in that midst. Um, uh, Langston Hughes no, won no major American award. Uh, it, even even his contemporary, his later contemporary, um, Gwendolyn Brooks would win a Pulitzer. Um, Langston Hughes would not would not receive those awards. There is a sense in which, th despite him being a central, dominant figure in um, in African American poetry and in American poetry in general, he did not necessarily get the recognition. Langston Hughes went through an interesting period. Of course, he went through a period where there was a he was he was writing highly political work, um, quest and became in, in really as I have said about other writers became very much engaged by um, Marxism at least by by the communist movement, um, and there was a period where he was writing asking questions about it. But he would then move back to um, his sort of uh, he was disillusioned by by Marxism and 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 and. and and, and, and communism, um, but was really, really committed to, uh, to civil rights and, and the freedom of African Americans. Um, there are a number of really critical poems that, of course, that we'll talk about um, in, our, in our discussion. I'm going to focus on three poems, uh, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. We'll talk briefly about an early blues poem, but then I want to look at a poem called Harlem, which is really a critical poem um, in Langston Hughes' body of work. And then there's a wonderful poem called Dream Boogie, which is his jazz period where he's asking questions about 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 the, the, the validity and the importance of jazz um, in the African-American experience and of course in the American experience.
Um, but Langston Hughes, I think, remains a pivotal figure. He's a figure that wrote in, 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 in a very particular kind of way. He, he drew on blues, he drew on jazz, experimentation, and so on, but was a, was a meticulous reviser. And, and he did a, a number of pieces. He was also a playwright, a very, very prolific and successful playwright. Um, he was a radio um, personality, and he developed a series of essays, of course, on African-American uh, poetry and, and, and black poetry. So he's a very central figure. So when we come back, we'll look at these, these poems that I mentioned that I want to focus on in some detail. <laughs> 